Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we continue with Accounting 312, Chapter 21, uh, Capital Budgeting. Last the time, we used a very short video talking about the IRR. Uh, we talk about, hey, um, how do we decide to accept a project or to reject a project? We said we compare IRR with RRR. And we also said if IRR is larger than RRR, that also indicates that NPV is positive. Um, so I'm not really going to read this, but make sure we talk about that. The IRR actually calculated the rate. It's an investment. It's each specific investment, specific project, each specific project, um, project investment. You know, um, it said we we we. We said we, we will get the IRR when the NPV equals to zero. Uh, so this is how we get our calculation of the IRR. That's how we get the calculation of IRR. Uh, managers only accept the project if it's RRR, IRR larger or equal to the RRR, right? So we talk about that. Let's look at how do we get our IRR. I do the first one, you do the second one by yourself. Um, the IRR based on the textbook is when the NPV equals to zero, when the NPV equals to zero. So that's how we set up the equation. You are buying a laptop at $1,000, useful life is four years, no residual. And then, so you have this uh, T equals to zero, T equals to one, T equals to two, T equals to three, T equals to four. So right, too long. And then um, your investment, your investment now you should know is negative a thousand at the beginning of the project. Um, next, or, next four year operating income every year is 315.5305. I'm not going to write, um, but it's for four years annuity, annuity, annually. So they should be used annuity. We use table four. Make sure you know what I'm talking about. A required rate of return is 12%. What's the IRR? Should you buy this laptop? Yes or no? Okay, so how do we get our IRR? How do we get our IRR? Our IRR, we calculate, as I said, we set up the equation is NPV equals to zero. Okay, NPV equals to zero. You don't need RRR to calculate IRR. You don't need RRR to calculate IRR. So all you need is you need to get the rate by yourself. You need to get the rate by yourself. You don't use the given RRR. How do we get NPV? We said it's your net, right? Your outflow plus your inflow. Every year you get that much money, you discount the four years, you discount the four years. So we use table four. Your future flow is 315.5. And then we discount a factor. We don't know the factor because we need to get the rate. We know it's a four years, but we don't know the rate. We need to look at the rate. Okay, we need to look at the rate. But we know your outflow is the same as your inflow. So we can get our factor will be, I don't have my phone. Sorry, sorry about that. We will get the, it's my bad, okay. We will get our factor is, okay, our factor is how much? 3.17, our factor is 3.169. I saw our factor is 3.169. And then we got this factor, we know it's a four years. We know it's a four years. So this is how you got, how you got the IRR, look very carefully. You go from four years, you go all the way, you look at the factor has to be around 3.17. Okay, four years, 3.17. We look up, we look up, we found out what the IRR. The IRR will be 10%. That's how you got the IRR, four years, Factor 3.17, you look up, you found out that the rate is 10%. We 
we need to look up to find the rate. Okay, so students, it's kind of awkward at the beginning, yeah, but practice, practice, the good thing is, if I tell you, it's just the straightforward. You set up the equation, NPV equals to zero, you get a factor from the factor, you get your IRR. And then required rate is RRR 12%. We only get 10% for this investment. Should we take the, should we buy the laptop, yes or no? We should not buy the laptop. We should not buy the laptop. Okay, um, I'll leave the second case to you and then make sure you practice and double check, check your uh, work with me. Um, some students say, oh, Professor, this is coincident, right? You said, oh, you just got 3.17. So what will happen if you don't get the number like 3.1, let's say 3.1. This is 3.17, this is 3.03. How can I know it's 11% or 10.9%, 10.8%, 11.5%, how can I know? You can do that using your calculator, using your Excel, you know, you can even Google there in calculator, financial calculator. But don't worry in this class because I'm not going to test you for that one. If I test you IRR, I already did all the work. I made sure you can find the number from the table. Okay, uh, last thing I want to talk very briefly, um, why we said MPV is still better, you know, than the cousin of IRR. Uh, many reasons, you know, uh, MPV, you can get the dollar amount and then you can sum, it, sum them up like you have you have these three projects, right? So we said gas station, um, you bought maybe NPV 100,000, ice cream 200,000, apartment is 300,000, you can add them. But you cannot add 12% plus 10% plus 8%. So um, that's the first reason if you have a portfolio. Second is NPV is always one number, uh, but sometimes IRR is more than one number. It happens a lot. Uh, no, I kind of shouldn't say it happens a lot. It happens. Um, especially if you have outflow and inflow. Uh, now what we are doing here in this chapter is in the first, at the beginning of the project, I shouldn't say, at the beginning of the project, you buy something, it's your outflow, and then from that one, you will have inflow, 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 right? But in the reality, uh, sometimes it's you have outflow at the beginning, you have inflow, then you have the investment, you have outflow again. So you have a positive, you have negative, positive, negative. And then if you draw the line, um, it's more likely you have a different uh, IRR, okay? Uh, third one is because um, RRR sometimes, um, you will have a different IRR. Uh, third one is sometimes the RRR uh, changes because we said um, capital budgeting spans many, many years, like 10 years. So uh, sometimes the bank requires 10%, maybe next year requires 12%. So if you have a different RRR, uh, then you just need to use that new RRR to calculate NPV, but you cannot do that when you have the IRR. But what I really want to let you know, and if I test you is, IRR, I just assumed that the project cash flow will be reinvested at the project rate of return. What's the meaning? Let's say for your gas station, right? You, you borrow the money 10% uh, from the bank, and then you got 12% for the IRR. So once you get the money, you want to reinvest. When you reinvest, actually we will reinvest for the company. So when you reinvest, you should use the rate of 10%. But if you use IRR, it assumes that your, invest, your reinvestment is based on the project still 12%. If you say, I don't really know what you're talking about. That's completely fine. Just to know RRR based on the company. IRR is based on that project. So if you use the IRR cash flow to reinvest, to reinvest uh, your new project, you will assume it uses the IRR rate, which is wrong, which is wrong, because we should use the NPV and use the company's RRR as the reinvestment. Okay, um, you will say, I need to have some practice. I will, uh, you know, put the multiple choice in the blackboard and then you can practice some 
as a, a personal listening to NPV is straightforward. The IRR takes a little while to think, especially you set up the equation kind of awkward. Uh, <laughs> just to know how to get a number, you know, uh, what's the meaning kind of is related with each project. And then practice, practice, practice. And let me know if you have any, any question. If you have any, any question. I'll see you next time.